What is up everyone? JD here. I hope you're all doing well today. Today I'm really excited to bring you the full review for my damned designed Cerberus. The Cerberus has a three and a half inch 14C 28N blade steel, 4.86 inch titanium handles, an overall length of 8.12 inches. Yeah, this is a full size knife. Claim weight is 5.5 ounces, but I do disclose that weight is the only weight that's listed on the website. And I do know they have G10 variants. So it is definitely gonna be off when we put this guy on the scale. No, I haven't weighed it, but I can definitely feel it is heavier than the 5.5 listed weight on the website site 6.3 ounces and it absolutely feels like a 6.3 ounce knife it is definitely a full-size knife that feels like it is meant to be used heavy and hard Woo! let's go ahead and get the comparison knives out here so you can really have a frame of reference to the size of this big guy then we're going to talk about the knife and then we're going to talk about some comparable options and some of those are going to be shown in the comparison knives. First up, representing Spyderco is going to be the Yojimbo 2. The Yojimbo 2 is a DLT trading exclusive with a 20 CV blade steel and it also is very similar in size to the Para 3. It is a tad bit longer because it does have the pointy blade and the pointy handle but it is very close so that you have an idea if you're familiar with the Para 3. Next is going to be the Spyderco Shaman. The Shaman also very similar in size to the Paramilitary 3. I just happen to like these two knives more than I like the Paramilitary lineup. As you can see, Damn Designs knife is more closer in size and nature to the Shaman than it is the Yojimbo 2. Let's go ahead and get to the crossbar lock knives that I like to do for these reviews. And the first guy up is going to be my Benchmade Bug Out. This one here has the Flytanium scales. You can get them at flytanium.com. I anodized them myself. The ones that they sell are just raw. They leave it blank slate for you to do what you want with it. Next up, and the knife that again, I think is going to compare more closely to the damn design Cerberus is going to be the SIG K320 made by Hogue. As you can see, full size knife, definitely looks very similar in size to the SIG than it does. Obviously, the Benchmade is a lightweight, small, thin EDC. But if you're familiar with the knife, at least you now have a frame of reference for size. The last two knives that I am going to bring out for this comparison is going to be the K Kubi KU321, also known as the Kubi Royal. As you can see here, just the presence of the damn design makes it quite laughable. The last budget knife that I'm going to bring out is going to be the Buck 110 Plus. This one here is the Slim. And as you can see here, the slim is longer, but there's way more presence with the damn designs. Hopefully you're familiar with some of these knives that I brought out, and hopefully this helps you for a frame of reference for the size of this knife. I am going to talk about the knife now. Yes, it is big. Yes, it is heavy, but sometimes it's just nice to have a pocket tank. This guy does, he has, he is just unapologetic. He is large and in charge and ready to do whatever you need as far as tasks are concerned. It has nice contouring. It has a little bit of milling here at the top and the bottom. And believe it or not, it actually does land in the right spot. So you're feeling it in your palm and you're getting extra grip out of this knife. I love the little touches with this knife. I'm gonna to touch on that while I'm in the handle. It is reversible. I love the fact that they gave you a little titanium chip plate here to put in on the show side to keep everything smooth and have a very nice aesthetic. That's good attention to detail. The milled lines look good. They're not too in your face and they do serve a purpose. There's a little bit of chamfering around the edges, but you still can feel that you have the top and the bottom in the right spot on from the knife in the hand. So that works really well. Pocket clip is awesome. It is underneath of the screws and everything is inset into the handle. So it's really well done. I appreciate that. And it is super ultra deep carry. There is milling on the inside, even though you might not think so. 
the milling on the show side opposite of the liner side is going to be bigger than the milling that's on the back behind the actual inset liner i love the fact that you can barely see the liner from the non-show side you just see a little bit of teeth sticking out and it works whether you want to put your finger directly on top and bring it over or if you'd like to come in from the side and drop it down a little bit the bearing action really nice they look like phosphor bronze but i've not had a reason to take this one apart the flipper tab has both pull, uh, light switch and push button functionality as you can see the jumping supports both so you can push it or if you're a light switch type person, which I think the action is a little bit better this way in my personal opinion because you're working with the detent, comes out really nice. I feel like the push button, just it's just a little shallow, so it will come out, but you got to remind yourself to really get on it. I like the blade shape. It's a nice little drop point with a little bit of a curve. They put a very nice edge on this knife from the factory. 14C both on this and the Hades seem to be working really well and I have enjoyed carrying this. The stone wash that they do on the blade carries over to the handle so you have a really nice looking stone wash on here that looks really nice and feels good in hand. They even did a stone wash on the pocket clip and you can really tell that on the edges. You see how it looks worn like it's been used um, and this is a brand new knife so I really like this. I haven't carried it a ton on the weekends when I'm in my jeans it fits a little bit better or my shorts um, when I don't have quite as much stuff in the pocket can't really squeak with this one in with an organizer now really quickly before we get into the comparable knives I did want to go ahead and bring the Hades back out here because I talked about that I did keep the basilisk because that was just too big it was just way too big let me show you the difference so the 8.12 inches is just a little bit out of the range of what I do like to carry and let me talk about the differences this one's much more slender you can see they didn't do any of the milling instead they did some chamfering and they keep it they kept it really skinny so when it's in hand it actually feels smaller than what it is you're actually behind the blades with this grip whereas with the cerberus <laughs> sorry i almost messed up the name it is definitely much more full in hand it definitely feels like if you were working with gloves this would work really well which is nice because the price again i believe with the uh 14 c 28 n which i really like i like 14 c 128 n a lot it's going to be a good work knife it's going to sharpen up really easy and be really easy to maintenance and at 110 dollars if you need something cheap that's a work knife this is a good option now of course you could go 30 bucks get yourself a usa made buck um, and just abuse the hell out of it and not really care the difference is this is not going to hold an edge as long as that and i also had to strop this when i got it because it wasn't done very sharp now let's talk about things that are comparable that go either way again i wanted to add this into my my videos because i want to give some really good options one that i like right out the gate that i mentioned was close in size is going to be the shaman the problem with the shaman is because spider co has rotated over their inventory for the new year they've been kind of upgrading some steels and coming out with a couple of new knives is that it's not as readily available i expect that's going to change soon i expect that we're probably going to see some upgraded steel on the shaman which is going to explain why it hasn't been in stock as often i do prefer the compression lock because it does keep the finger out of the blade path but i do like the fact that they have the inset liner lock because it doesn't make it as difficult to operate with um like the frame lock because you don't have to worry about your fingers resting on the frame or if it's going in and out of the pocket smoothly so um that was one option that's more expensive i do have one more and then i'll go down to the other end of the spectrum for something that i think is a little bit more affordable next up if you're interested in the titanium variant and you want a more premium steel first of all you can get this in s35 vn which is a fantastic steel has fantastic edge retention good corrosion resistant but not quite as tough as the 20 cv 20 cv is not corrosive resistant like s35 vn and it does hold an edge a little bit longer um, so this is a good comparison here of a full-size knife the hinder design i think for ergos wins out i just i love the ergos on this it just it feels like it's 
just made for my hand. It's hard to explain, but that's not to say that the Cerberus is bad. The Cerberus does a good job with mimicking that type of contouring so that it feels like it's in a natural position when it's in the hand. I really appreciate that a lot. Now, I do like the drop point a little bit better on the um, ZT0562 because it comes down so you don't have to get up as high if you need to get into the tip or do any type of precision work. Having said that, the way that they built this handle naturally wants to push the tip down. So it is a little bit harder. You do have to come up a little bit high to get to that tip, but the way that it falls back into the hand and the hand can cradle it and you can get the finger out there, you can adjust that so it's still comfortable. I wouldn't say it's great. It's not as good as this. This, you definitely don't have to come up as high. So the drop point on there is a little bit better. All right. So let's go to the other end of the spectrum. One that is probably going to be competitively priced, but it's not going to be cheaper. However, it is a USA made knife and that is going to be the SIG K320. Unfortunately, I think because of inflation and cost and things of that nature, you're going to be paying almost $130 for S30V versus paying $135, $140 for S35V and if you wanted to get the more premium steel. But here's a USA made blade option if you don't want to support overseas knives because I know that's some people are into that other people don't matter they just want the best value quality built knife they don't want something cheap that's going to fall apart in their hand nobody wants to spend their money on junk but if you're interested in a very good usa made knife this is a really nice option still it does have perforation here on the polycarbon handles which does give gripping i just wish they would have kept it up here like done like a little patch here it does get a little bit slick especially when you're trying to move around and operate the able lock which is a really good locking system foster bronze washer and the pivot going to be a lot more reliable in harsher environments that have debris dust dirt sand things of that nature bearings are not going to fare as well in there but if you keep your blade clean it's not going to be that big of a deal now, the last option, if you want a more premium steel than 14C28N or S35VN, and you don't want to spend as much money, you can get the Seki City Japan made Indela. The Indela compares really good in size. As you can see here, a little bit longer, but the thinner profile on the Indela actually makes this very competitive. And you can get the Indela with 20 CV, which again, you saw that on the hinderer, fantastic edge retention and toughness, but not corrosive resistant, but you can look around and do like I did and get yourself a coded version so that you don't have to worry about the corrosiveness as much. Now it's a little bit thinner in blade, but what they did to try to strengthen up the tip is they put this bend in it, which one makes it really nice for the utility cuts and having to you do utility work, but it does help give a a little bit more strength out to the tip these are the options that i could come up with i'm sure that there's some other ones out there if you're you know whatever you're looking for if you're looking for the steel this is a great option if you're looking for a work knife that you can use and abuse this is a little bit better because it does have the bi-directional frn handles if you want titanium and you like the look of that you can do this now now there's one more option before i forget you can get the G10 version of this for like half the cost. So if you like 14C and you like S35VN, I believe that you can get the Cerberus, which is the full size version with the G10 as well, which would definitely be tough to beat because then you're getting down to that Kubi Royal type pricing, but you're getting 14C you're getting S35VN. I think the S35 is like around 80. So you're getting, basically the same materials right g10 feels like frn you're getting s35vn for around 80 for around 80 bucks i think no wait i'm sorry this one actually with the 20 cv does take it up over 100 dollars. i think it's the vg110 that's around 80 bucks so actually i take it all back the damn design's the better buy hopefully you before you type the comment down below you you <laughs> waited to see that I came to the realization that no, the Indela with the uh, 20 CV, I did forget about that. It's about a hundred bucks. All right. So now that I've realized that another option 
<laughs> if you want something that is hard use that has a thick stock and is meant to be like a user bruiser case does have this one here and this does have s35 vn it has aluminum handles not titanium for 115 bucks so about the same price as the 14c 28n variant of the cbrus with titanium you can get S35EN with aluminum for about 115 bucks. There, I made up for my mistake, hopefully with the Indela before anyone <laughs> threw me to the fire in the comments. This one does also come with bearings, really smooth action. I have not had handled it enough to do the full review on that one. Anyway, to wrap this up, this is a easy recommendation whether you get the g10 or if you want the premium titanium variant this knife is extremely well built and extremely well thought out there's a lot of attention to detail here not just in what you see on the knife but the lines the ergos how the knife is uh, built to be used there's a lot of attention to detail and i appreciate that from the, the designer and the manufacturer I feel like did a good job executing on the design. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, consider leaving a like. And if you do enjoy the content, I'd love to have you subscribe and follow along. If you're already subscribed, thanks so much for the support. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought about this damn design. Or if you have a different knife, what you love about it and why you carry it. Because I have really enjoyed my experience with the three knives that I've been able to handle from damn design so i know they had some older models i know they have some smaller models um they have a lot of models thank you for all your support thanks for tuning in today guys i hope you have a fantastic week until next time peace